Welcome everybody, um, I'm Kerry. Um, so thanks for taking um, that time out of your lunch, your lunch break to, to join us today. So um, we're gonna go through, uh, I've got some, some slides to go through, uh, which you should have access to um, at, the, at the end. So there's no need necessarily to kind of um, make notes, but you can do if you if you wish, basically. So uh, hopefully this works. Right. OK, so a bit about me. So I have been involved in this space for for a while, done it for, for a while, uh, primarily with the organizations that you see on the on the screen. Uh, so both it, so certainly from from different contexts and have worked in both sort of public and, and private sector um, in this space. So and also in sort of innovation space. So hopefully I'll kind of bring those um, experiences to bear in the presentation as we go along. Right. So what are we going to cover? <clears throat> so I'll, I'll give you a, a brief sort of outline about the concept of of, of circular economy. So start off, start off with that really. Um, we'll go through some some examples of use of the concept. I'm going to focus on food, saying that it's it's lunchtime. Um, also looking at electronics, water, and and energy as well. I think I mean important a couple of things to kind of note here. I mean, yes, it is about the sort of environmental um, issue, the wrong sort of circular economy and sustainability, but. I mean, the reason why I have kind of titled it as I have in terms of saving money is that it's also about addressing you know, sort of wider issues and wider core benefits around things like, for example, um, the cost of living crisis. So it, it's it kind of ticks, you know, those wider core benefits um, boxes as well. And there'll be polls throughout, uh, so the opportunity for for you to to engage and to interact with the with the content as well. And that's that's quite important, I thought. And and at the end, um, there'll be time for for questions. And if I can ask that you you kind of put your kind of questions or comments into the QA, QA box, and then I'll I'll pick them up at the end, or um, one of my colleagues who is on the call, uh, maybe Rebecca. Um, if as we go along and there are you know, burning questions, um, maybe Rebecca can answer um, in the meantime, but I'll, I'll pick them up <coughs> at the end. So as I said, if you can put them into the Q&A box, uh, please, then that will be that will be lovely. Um, there will also at the end be an opportunity for you to feedback. There's a, a feedback link which um, Rebecca will put into the Q&A box uh, towards the end. So, uh, and I'll remind you at the end about kind of filling in that. So it'll be, it'll be lovely if you could fill in that box, um, that um, feedback form for us at the end. Um, a couple of disclaimers, <laughs> very important. So um, I'm not in any way, I'm going to endorse, um, endorsing any of the products or services or companies that I'm going to be, be talking about. It's, you know, it, it's not, so don't take any um, any of the mentions that I I will make as an endorsement. That's um, not the case. I am also um, not making any claims as regard to sort of reliability um, or of any of the products or services. Um, that's very much um, your decision um, to make. Um, I'm sure. Also, that some of the things that I will mention um, you are aware of already, but hopefully there will be at least one thing um, that is new to you that you, you take away from, from the presentation today. <coughs> and then um, finally, views are on my own. Um, they are, should not be taken as representation of um, the council's uh, view. So they're very much my own views um, that I'm going to be going through with you today. So just 
<laughs> important uh, to kind of make note of those those issues. So we start off with a, a poll first of all, and I'll get um, hopefully Rebecca to to launch this for me. Hopefully this works. Is it working, Rebecca? Struggling to see the um Can you see the results in the chat, Terry? I need to stop sharing. The results are 21% of people have bought clothes secondhand. 21% have also had an item repaired. 25% have shopped at a local market. 21% have taken their own bottles and cups for refills. And 11% have paid to use a service rather than buying the product. And I think you can still vote on there if you haven't yet. Okay. I think probably in, in the interest of time, we, we probably might move on. Just yeah, it's a bit of a challenge in terms of being able to see. But I think the important thing is that that it's certainly um, it's evident that you have engaged with, with you know a number of those activities, and it, and that that kind of feeds into to what the circular economy is essentially. Um, and it is really about ensuring that there's minimization of the waste um, that is produced. And the way in which that is done is by, for example, kind of designing, designing out the, the waste um, from in the processes, um, looking at how we minimize consumption of materials, looking at, for example, how we might then ultimately kind of recycle those materials. So when we talk about circular economy, what we're essentially talking about is how can we reduce the amount of waste that is produced from the utilization of products and services. In, in simple terms, that's what we're really referring to when we talk about circular economy. And, I'll, and so and all of those examples that you saw in the first poll are all examples of practicalities of utilization of circular economy concepts. So hopefully that's that's clear in terms of what the circular economy is. And we go through we go through some examples, some further examples as well. So we start off in terms of food, seeing that it is lunchtime, and we so we start with food uh, first of all. <clears throat> and I mean these 
points here should be should be well known, but I've, I still thought I will, I will include them nevertheless. Um, in terms of things, you know, like you know, buy what you need, really, rather than than necessarily what's maybe on sale or what's you know, buy one for one, buy one get one free. Um, shop late. I mean, this is something that I do personally. It's um, and it, it works quite well in terms of being able, therefore, to sort of access discounts, particularly on, on sort of perishables. So this is something that I do. I do personally, and also um, something as well that I also do is kind of reusing and, and you know putting food into into different meals. And so I, I'm sure that these three things are they're not going to come as as any surprise to anybody but i still thought that um that i might i might mention them what's perhaps um maybe not as 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 well known is is kind of utilization of apps but this is something that's becoming you know more and more more and more relevant and more and more common and there, there are a number of different companies that are utilizing apps as a way of minimization of 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 food waste um one one example is um too good to go <laughs> um, and so what they basically do is that they would signpost you to um to cafes restaurants that have got excess food um, and where you can go um, to access that food a similar a similar app um, is is Olio, um, it's a social impact company, and they do a similar thing really in terms of connecting people um, to sort of local cafes and shops that have got surplus food. And, and important bit there is that it, it's it connects you to to local um, local cafes and restaurants. So you know these are two you know potential options that you could explore. As there there are a number of different apps as well but these these two are, are a couple that you could potentially explore in terms of um, food or um, you can also kind of engage with um, so community gardens or or allotments and i put a couple of screenshots here on the left um, these are community gardens in, in richmond and then on the right hand side these are community gardens in wandsworth so you know, again another Kind of initiative that you could utilize and could engage with to sort of minimize um, kind of food, sort of get opportunities for locally produced and um, produced foods. Close. We move on to move on to close. Uh, what's the next one? And I, I'll be launch the second poll. If that's okay, Rebecca. Probably have to read it out uh, for me because I can't, I can't pick it up. So far, the majority are saying that they would not spend one hundred and fifty-five pounds <laughs> on a pair of jeans, okay. um, but there is a sixteen percent that would. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. That's interesting. OK, so. That question comes from 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 this. Um, so this is a. A, a wealth company. Um, and they sell they, they juice um, they sell jeans. Um, which costs 155 quid and hence the hence the question. Um, but the good thing about the genes, <coughs> about these genes, is that they, I mean, they are they are sustainably produced um, in terms of the materials, um, but they also do repairs as well on on the genes, and so um, it is expensive. They are expensive uh, within within that context but they should last for quite a long time and then as i said 
there's also the opportunity, the opportunity at the end to be able to um, for for repairs, few repairs. And I mean, there are a number of different companies that offer this kind of this kind of service as well, not just um, for denim, but there's also I mean, probably one of the best one is is Nudy Jeans. Um, as well, they also offer a similar service. I said so there are a number of, of companies that offer this kind of services um, for clothes, um, and including in some cases often for repair as well too. And it also extends to other other items as well, like for example, um, this that um, second bags that do um, design the bags as well. So. So also it's also extending beyond um, sort of close items as well. This one is 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 interesting, and I'll need to click on it. And I need to uh, see if it shows. It's just not showing. You can see. So I, I wanted to, to show this because this so this company, um, they produce um, clothes for for children. Um, and as you can see, it, it the clothes will expand um, as the child as so so as the child grows, the clothes will expand um, as the child grows as well. And I thought you know it, the, the concept. Um, is is quite an interesting, quite an interesting one. So, and I wanted to actually show it on the on the website because it, you get you get a sense of how it works rather than just a, a screenshot. Of it. Right. Um. Well, I mean, if you don't want to spend 155 quid or 150 quid, um, there's also obviously potential to look at, at secondhand shops and the number of the number of secondhand shops um, where you can access clothing as well. Like, for example, um, Oxfam, um, Heart Farm, British Heart Foundation, um, Bernardo's. Trade. So there, there are a number of, of opportunities there in terms of, of secondhand, secondhand shops as well. Um, or alternatively, um, there's also Regal as well, which I mean obviously doesn't only do clothing, but um, there's a potential in terms of looking at, at clothing and, and Frigal does operate um, in Wandsworth. With the council, I should, I should, I should say. Um, so there's potential there, um, and of course, me Frigal does operate, you know, wide, more widely as well outside of 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 Wandsworth, and I quite like their kind of tagline there, like online dating uh, for stuff. So quite um, so. That's um, an, another option as well. If you, if you, as I said, if you don't want to go go down the route of buying the um, and then fifty five quid um, for their jeans, so let's let's move on to um, electronic items then. <clears throat> and there is, you know, there's an increasing um, drive to sort of for the production and and design of of sustainable devices. So I mean, like for example, you have um, repairability scores um, in France. You've got um, increasing repair legislation across the U.S. You know, different states across the U.S. And so you know, there's a, a growing movement um, looking at the development of sustainable um, devices. Probably one of the um, best known in terms of mobiles is is a company called Fairphone. 
Um, and they produce um, devices that are, are modular in design. Um, and so it means, therefore, because they're, they're modular in design, um, that the users can uh, make replacements on, on different components in, in the phone. And so they're, they're designed to be able um, to allow the user to make those to make those those changes. They are made with 100% um, recyclable plastics as well. And so, I mean, um, you know, they're, they're well known. Fairphone is well known um, for the, their sustainability of, of their devices. There are other companies as well too that do um, sustainable mobiles as well, but Fairphone is probably one of the, one of the better known of those um, devices, of those device um, makers, sorry. Um, alternatively, um, there is also the option of looking at, you know, buying a refurbished, um, refurbished or subscription mobile. Uh, if you go down that route, there's, you usually see that it's got one of two grades. So it's either listed as a grade A or as a grade B. And grade A is basically um, a device that's it's been it's been reconditioned as new, um, and with the idea that it only has just a few sort of cosmetic issues. Whereas a grade B is basically a device that's been ex inspected, it's been tested for functionality, um, but it may have some some defects. So it might have some some scratches. So important to kind of verify which grade the device is, whether or not it's a grade A or grade B. And and as with anything, I mean there are advantages and disadvantages with kind of using um, a refurbished device. Because you know it's it's cheaper, um, and you know there's a warranty attached. But at the same time, it's important to kind of note that there are disadvantages as well. Um, you know, it's a shorter uh, warranty period, it's older, and it isn't new, but at the same time, you know, if you're on a budget, it's it's an option um, to be to be explored. Um, a wider, a wider scale as well, too. Um, there's also. There's also um, library things. Um, which is an option where you can go and you can um, basically get access to different um, different electrical and electronic devices, um, and so it's you know it's a good opportunity to go and just basically um, rent devices, um, and they are available in and there's a library of things in in, in Wandsworth and Richmond as well. Perry, um, is the PowerPoint meant to be up? Can you not see it? We can't currently see it. Oh. Can you see it now? Yes, we can. Thank you. Yeah, OK, sorry about that. Um, OK, so as I said, um, so there's also the library of things. Um, as an option to be able to go and to to rent um, electronic items. Um, if, alternatively, um, there's also um, London Repairs, which is um, a service where you can access um, uh, shops which would um, which can repair which will repair um, your your items and it's a good it's a good service to use um, so you just just basically you can type in your postcode postcode and you can identify um, shops 
where you can have your where you can go and take your your item for for repair. So it's it's quite a good quite a good directory you know, that that could be utilized. So I I mentioned um, earlier in the first um, in the first poll about PASS. So basically, so PASS um, stands for Product as a Service, um, and there are an increasing number of companies that are utilizing PASS or Product as a Service as as a model, as a business model um, for utilization of, of electronic um, electronic. Um, Item. So one is a company called Charge Theory. So basically, um, it's it's a platform, and how it works is essentially if you got um, an EV, an EV vehicle, an electronic vehicle, um, uh, but you don't necessarily have a charging point. What they will do is that they will provide a remote charging point. Um, so they will come. And they will basically provide charge, and you just basically pay a, a subscription, which is essentially how a lot of these companies will operate. But what it basically means is that you don't necessarily have to have the, in this case, like the charging device. The company will provide it as a service, so you're basically um, paying for the service as opposed to purchasing the actual product itself. And I said there are a number of companies that that provide this kind of paths model. In the case of EV, um, Charles Ferry is is one. Um, Mele also do um, service for um, for for washing machines, where you basically pay a subscription for for the washing machine. So rather than purchasing the, the washing machine, you pay for the service of utilizing the washing machine. Um, Signify, so Signify is a subsidiary of Philips. And what they do is that they provide lighting as a service. So in this case, rather than purchasing the lights, you basically pay for, you pay a subscription for utilization of, of, of the lighting. Um, and one of the, this is going back a, a while now, but one of the um, firstly early adopters of this was um, the National Union of Students, their headquarters in, in London. Um, and I visited a couple of years, a few years ago. So, and so what they basically um, did is that they um, utilized the service. So Philips basically um, provided all of the infrastructure in terms of the lighting, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and in this case, the, the NUS basically just paid, paid for the lighting service and any repairs, any updates, et cetera, et cetera, had to be provided by, by Philips. So, and it's because of the model that's utilized, <coughs> there is an incentive um, certainly to reduce the consumption, but also it means that the, the, the risk shared because in this case, Signia continues to own the infrastructure it owns, the lighting, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas the customer basically pays, as I said, for lighting as, as a service. Um, and a similar similar model is also provided by, by Canon as well. So whereby you basically pay for the printing service. You don't own the printers. Canon continues to own the printer, but you pay a subscription fee for the um for the printing service so all all of them all of these past models operate in a similar so similar um context basically whereby you pay for the service rather than actually owning um the actual product itself if um on the other hand you want to you you feel more inclined to actually kind of upskill. Um, there are also opportunities to be able to do that. So upskill in terms of your, your repair knowledge. Um, and one one opportunity there is kind of utilization of, of repair cafes. So repair cafes are, are free. They're the community-based sites um, where 
um, there are tools and the materials um, that can be utilized for repair. So hence the term uh, repair cafes. And they're usually manned by volunteers who can assist. So, you know, it's a good way for you to go and, and upskill in terms of your, your, your repair um, knowledge and, and expertise. Um, and then there are also kind of local um, entities that utilize a similar kind of concept. So, for example, there's um, Roehampton Community Shed um, as well as kind of utilize a similar concept. And so this is another photo um, at Roehampton. So there are tools, there are devices, and there are volunteers um, at the centers. And you can go and you can get you know, your equipment um, repaired. And you can upscale at the at the same time in terms of being able to um, improve your understanding and your knowledge about about repair. <laughs> so let's um, move on to water um, quickly. Um, I launched the third poll. Thanks, Rebecca. We have to read it out from me again because I can't. Yeah, we just have a few more answers coming through. Okay. Um, majority 54% think 200 litres. Okay. 29% think 50 litres and 20% think 500 litres. Um, yeah, they're slowly evening out, but the 200 one is the most popular answer. Okay. That is actually the correct answer. <clears throat> so well done. <laughs> um, so this is this is information that I took from 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 Teams Water. So um, so they said it, it would be about two hundred liters a, a day, but if it's a, a major leak, as you can see, that that could go up significantly. So um, I think you know the important thing is is there about um, checking for leaks. As a as a way of of, of minimizing minimizing that potential, and most of the water is actually used in the bathroom for showering and 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 bathing, and so you know clearly you know looking at that as a way of of reduction in sort of water use um, is 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 one is one good thing really, but important thing in terms of that you know checking for, you know, doing routine checks and, and maintenance to kind of um, check for check for leaks and things like that. Also, you know, just a couple of points then in terms of, you know, your washing machine um, and your kettle, um, you know, those are devices that kind of use up quite a lot of water and, and energy. So just just be mindful in terms of in terms of that, you know, so you know, run the machine when it's full, um, but opposite in terms of the kettle. And if you've got a garden, um, might be a good idea to kind of use utilize a use a water butt so conservation um, conservation means. Yeah. Um, in terms of shower, um, maybe look at um, kind of you know the shower head that's used as a way of sort of conservation, conservation of water. So maybe look at kind of getting a, an eco um, shower head as a way to kind of reduce water. So let's move on rapidly um, to energy. <coughs> and fourth poll, please, Rebecca. Uh, 
At the moment, the majority of people are saying C. Um, okay. With the next category saying they don't know, there's a few E's and D's and then a B. But this might this might change as people um, remember or work out what it is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, C is the okay, majority. That, okay. I think that's actually if there are lots of C's, that's that's quite good. <laughs> it's quite a good thing. Um, but I'm not surprised in terms of in terms of of, of doing those. So so EPCs, um, energy performance certificates, um, are just basically um, uh, they're an indication of how how energy efficient um, your home or, or a building a building is, and, and they're different from the sort of scores that you see like on on your devices. You know, it's a similar kind of concept. And so, what it basically does, what your EPC basically um, tells you is, is that how energy efficient the building is and it goes from from A to G with A being um, most efficient and G being the most inefficient. So I mean if most people if a lot of people are saying that there are C's that's um, that's a good thing and that's you know that's very much where the government wants wants to be. Um, but and it is it's very, very easy actually to work out what your EPC is, um, you know, regardless of where you are um, in, in the UK. So I've put the link here. So I mean, when you get the slides, you can have a look at the at the link. Um, and if you just type in, type in that, uh, a box will come up and you can put in your, your postcode or your street name or anything like that. And that will tell you your, your EPC. So it is it is really really quite easy to to work out what your what your EPC what your EPC is, um, and the reason why I kind of flag um, the EPC is because that's a good starting point in terms of of energy energy savings and working out what is possible and where you know where you are. <clears throat> so just a few um, a few tips, and again, I mean none of these should be. Um, should come as should come as any any surprise. Um, you know, you know, go for things that are most efficient, uh, not necessarily um, the cheapest the cheapest option. You know, buy um, devices that will last for a long time, um, and if possible, kind of repair. So it goes back to the point I was making earlier, and which um, provides you know good. Uh, a good a good source of advice i would say in terms of in terms of what to do um, about energy efficiency um uh, as it relates to devices and then the last the last point there in terms of of what i call retrofitting is is i think an important important point and kind of links back as i said to the the epc EPC rating. So your EPC rating gives you an indication as regards, as I said, to what, how energy efficient your home or, or your building is. And that therefore then gives you an indication as regard to what, what should you do or what could you potentially do. And that could range, for example, from, as I put here in terms of like conservation measures. So it might be, you know, simple things about, you know, have your curtain or kind of using, Things like draft excluders or brushes that kind of prevent the loss of heat, or you might look for something that's a bit more, um, uh, a bit more in terms of, of efficiency. So it might like insulation of, of you know thermostats, smart thermostats, for example, or, or LED lighting, or even kind of zoning so that you know different rooms have got different. Um, in temperatures. So if you're in say, the living room more so than anything else, but well then you direct the heat towards your living room and the other other rather than the other rooms, for example. Or it might be um, you know that you also that you look for um to actually kind of you know generating kind of renewable heat, uh, renewable energy as well. 
if, if it is that, you know, it is affordable, it's possible. <laughs> but there, there are different, the important point to note there is that there are different measures and along the, along the way. And so think about, first of all, what your EPC reading is, and then give some consideration to what you might look to do to improve further in terms of energy efficiency. Um, it might be a simple thing in terms of, you know, the readings that you use as well, you know, um, whether or not it is a, um, a boiler or heater, whatever. So important to kind of look at what readings um, you have set and just make sure that they are um, ideal, ideal settings. Um, so these are based on the recommendations from which, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> Important point to note um, for persons that maybe are um, have you know have a lower EPC rating and they're in fuel poverty. There are grants that are available, <clears throat> and one of those is um, Eco Four Eco Four scheme, which provides it's a government grant. It's a government scheme which provides funding um, to be able to upgrade and to improve the energy efficiency. So, so when you get the slides, you can have a look at look at this as, as a potential option uh, for, for funding. Um, it's, it's there to provide support for those in, in fuel poverty, um, as I said earlier. And it runs up until, it should run, I should say, up until the end of March, 2026. So there is you know, some time for you to kind of explore um, whether or not it is, um, uh, whether or not you want to avail yourself of it. <clears throat> and there are other other schemes as well, other funding schemes there as well too, that, that you could look into. Um, like for example, the, the Great British Insulation Scheme, um, Boiler Upgrade Scheme, Warm Homes Discounts um, as well. The Warm Home Discount, I believe, comes to end at the end of October, I think, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. But there are, but the point that I'm trying to 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 make is that if you are um, at a lower scale in terms of the EPC rating and or you are in full field poverty, there are grants, there are schemes available that you can access to be able to improve the efficiency. So you know, by all means, explore. Um, Explore those opportunities. Um, a potential, um, you know, good source of support um, is an organisation which you know, we have worked with, we as in, as in council, uh, called Crew, and they can kind of help uh, provide an advice, um, audits, and stuff like that. You know, they're 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 a good company to to, um, and certainly. And recommend them on a, on a personal level, so um, you can have a look at look at, at those. So I just wanted to um, end um, with a couple um, notices, if you will, if you will. So one is about our um, micro grant um, program for for residents um, in Wandsworth. So. And those are between 100 and 500 pounds um, for to for you to be able to produce some um, events or activities um, available to community groups and schools and individuals as well um, and nonprofits. So you can go onto our website, the council, the Wandsworth uh, Council website, and you can get more information on that. Couple um, upcoming deadlines, so the end of October, 25th of October, and then again the 22nd of November. So by all means, have a look at those as an opportunity for, for funding. Also, our the climate newsletter, um, where you can sign up and you can get information from the council about upcoming activities um, and just you know tips and advice, et cetera. So I would also kind of urge you um, to kind of sign up for those as well for the, the climate newsletter. And then finally, 
Um, just a plug for the sustainability one through sustainability network. And this, the, the next one will be um, next week, Wednesday, the 9th of, of, of October. Um, and so I kind of urge you to, to sign up for that. It's free, uh, but spaces are limited. And so I would kind of urge you to as I, sign up for, for that. So for the sustainability network. And so that's on the 9th of October. Uh, and it's 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 true. So and it 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 will be a good event. Um, so if you so minded, um, and you have time, please sign up for that. And that is me. So my um, email is there. Um, and just a reminder about completing the feedback form um, as well, if you don't mind. That would be great. Um, I know I'm a bit over time, but if there are any questions, I'm happy to try to answer them. We had one question come in um, from Councillor Gasser about the fairy fuel, um, about what it actually looks like, if I've got the right name for that what it looks like. So, um, I mean, as I said, it's it's essentially, it's a platform um, where you subscribe, which you subscribe to. I, I believe I believe it's a monthly subscription. I mean, I've never, I've not actually used it myself, but I believe it's a monthly subscription. Um, and, you know, as a subscriber, I said, what my understanding is basically what they will do is that the company will make arrangements with you to come to your home and they will provide the the ev charging service um, to you at your home i believe that that's essentially how it works do you know what the device looks like um and whether it sits on the road or the pavement i i i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know okay thank I you i don't have those details I'm sure they're on the website. Yes, yeah, yeah. We also had a question about whether the EPC rating on the government website works for a church. Works for a church. Um, I mean, as, a, as long as you put in your postcode, I mean, it, it, it should work, I believe. Okay, that's the questions we've had so far. Um, if anyone else has any, please put them in the chat or in the Q&A and I can read them out. I know it's a bit of a, a whistle stop um, through the various things, but there's quite a bit to cover. And and as I said, I mean, you would have access to the, to the slides, so they will be sent out, so you'll have access to the slides, so you can read read the details when you when you get the slides or feel free to to email me and I'll I'll respond. We haven't had any other questions come through so I think it's probably the end. Thank you Terry. Okay thanks thanks very much um Rebecca for, for your help and thanks very much everybody for for joining.